Hi, Prabhu here. Today we will see about how to model and texture page keychain in Maya 2017 and Photoshop. The final output is look like this. I hope you like it. Stay tuned. Okay, before we get into the actual project, we need to set the project folder. It's really important because we are not only do modeling. After we model, we need to texture in Photoshop. So go to file and choose project window and choose new project. So I will choose my project name of cage underscore keychain. So I will choose my location of my D drive, you choose wherever you want and click accept. Now go to create panel, polygon primitives, disable the interactive creation. So that means when I click on poly cube, it will automatically create an center of grid. So go to poly cube inputs, you need to give subdivision width and height depth to 2. So now press R and scale in X sorry scale in Z and also scale in X like this so double click on this mid edge and press W and move in Z double click on this edge and press R and scale in X so I will right click and choose vertex I will select this vertex and press W I will move over here and press R and scale in X so like this now you need to add two more edge loops so insert edge loop on mid and also here so now double click on this mid edge and press R and scale in mid so like this so double click on the sage and shift to double click on the sage and press w and move in z so right click and choose vertex so i will select this three vertex over here and shift and select this three vertex and move in z in up so like this so now we need to add two more edge loops over here so right click and choose edge mode so shift right click and choose insert edge loop you need to add one more edge loops here and also here so double click on this edge and press R and scale in X so double click on the edge and press R and scale in X so like this now you need to adjust little bit on bottom side so I will select this vertex and press R and scale in X so double click on the edge and scale in X so now right click and choose object mode so I want to scale in X little bit so now we need to adjust on center side so I will select this 2 edge on center part and also bottom side and press R and scale in Y so to make little bit big so I also I will select this booth in center I will scale a little bit in Y so I will select this edge and also in bottom side and scale in Y so like this so right click and choose center vertex over here and shift select the center vertex and also scale in Y so now right click and choose object mode and press 3 in keyboard 
so now I got my hot in shape so now I need to adjust this vertex scale in X and press W I will move a little bit in Z so to maintain even distance so now right click and choose object mode so I will select the smooth vertex here and also bottom side and press R and scale in Y so you need to adjust until you get perfect shape so I will select this both things and scale in Y so and right click and choose object mode in the object selected and press 3 and keyboard so now you check it will be ok or not so I need to select this vertex and shift select this vertex so on opposite side also and you need to scale in Y so like this so select this one and shift select this one and scale in Y so right click and choose object mode so now I got perfect hot in shape over here so now we need to select in edge mode so double click on this edge and go to modify convert and choose poly edge to curve option box here you need to choose best to gauss and choose 3 cubic and click convert so that means our poly edge will be convert as a curve so you need to make sure you need to do on all other edges so double click on this edge and press G to repeat our last command so see here our curve will be little bit inside of our mesh so in the curve selected right click and choose control vertex so and select this front side and press W I want to move in Z so I will select this one I will move a little bit in distance so when you have some troubles you need to adjust manually so I will select this one I will move a little bit in down so I will select this one and move a little bit in Z okay so now you need to make sure on all other edges so double click on this edge and press G in keyboard so I need to make on all other three edges so double click on this edge and press G so double click on this edge and press G double click on this edge and press G so double click on this center edge and press G so now we got that cage shape with our curve so we need to make some thickness to this object so go to create panel nobs produce and uncheck this interactive creation and click on nobs circle it will automatically create it in center of grid and press W I want to move in Z sorry move in X and press R and scale in mid so I need to make sure little bit small so when the curve selected when the shape selected go to window and choose outliner so it's really important so I will expand this one so because we need to maintain our outliner clean as possible so I will select my node circle and shift select any of the scope and go to surfaces and choose extrude option box here you need to reset the settings go to edit and reset settings here you need to choose cube add path component and profile normal so all four things and choose complete and choose as nodes click extrude so that means our shape will be traveled on this curve so you need to do same thing on all other edges so select the snow circle and shift select the curve 
and press G so that means it will repeat our last command so now see here it will be in black so that means your object will be in reverse direction so it will be you need to go to lighting and disable the two side lighting option so it's really important so if you enable this two side lighting option it will won't show our reverse object so I will uncheck this one to off our two side lighting option so now I need to clear this reverse lighting so select this object and go to surfaces and choose reverse direction so now our lighting will be clear so I will select this snow circle and shift select this go and press go to surfaces and choose extrude so you select the snow circle and shift select the go and press G so now our lighting will be reverse so I will select this object and go to surfaces and choose reverse direction so select this object and shift select this go and press go to surfaces and choose extrude so select this one and go to surfaces and choose reverse direction so select this go and shift select this object and go to surfaces and choose extrude so select this circle shift select this go and press G so select this object go to surfaces and choose reverse direction so now I need to reduce little bit thickness of this object so it's really important so select this nerve circle press R and scale in mid so see here when I scale this object all our nerve surface will be reduced because of the history is still present so I will scale very tiny bit okay so now you see here here we have some troubles so I will right click and choose control vertex so see here I will select this control vertex and press E and rotate a little bit in Z to, to make roundness so like this you need to adjust so I will select this one and rotate in Z and rotate in also Y so I will select this one and rotate in Z so if you have some troubles you need to adjust it manually so I will select this one and rotate in Z so select this one and rotate in Z select this one and rotate in Z so select this one and rotate in Z so select this one and rotate in Z okay so same thing on this one so right click and choose control vertex I will rotate a little bit in Z okay so now it's all clear so right click and choose object mode so now we need to clear our history before that see here our mesh will be little bit inside over here so select this press 4 so to see our wireframe mode so you need to select this vertex over here so I will select this control poly to go option so I will select this go right click and choose control vertex I will select this control vertex and press W you need to move in Z so now I select this control go so right click and choose control vertex I will select this one and move in Z so like this and press Y to see our shaded mode so right click and choose object mode so select all the object go to edit delete by type 
and choose history so now you need to select all the code in your scene so in outliner you need to select all the code using control and press delete in keyboard so that means our all codes will be deleted so now you need to rename this object so this one is the hot in shape so I will double click on this one and rename shape 01 so now select this one and control select all other things here you need to expand this one so here you need to click on this one and choose rename so when I rename here so all other objects will be renamed so select all the object here you need to choose rename option so here I will make cage underscore shape zero one and press enter so that means see here our all other objects will be automatically renamed so now in the all the objects selected and press ctrl G to group and rename this group name as so object underscore main zero one so like this you need to maintain your outliner much clean as possible it's really important when you are working in productions so I will group this object so our all other shape will be inside of this group so now go to front view and press W you need to move in Y so you need to move above the grid like this so now go to perspective go to polygons and click on polyplane so it will automatically create a center of grid and press R and scale big so I need not any divisions so I will give subdivision width and height to 1 so now we need to make our keychain before that I will rename my polyplane as ground 01 so now we need to create chain using CV cow tool so go to right side view go to create panel and choose CV cow tool option box as 3 cubic and close the settings you need to draw the curve like this and press enter to stop the tool go to perspective so right click and choose control vertex so I will select this control vertex and press W and move Z so it will be very straight so I will give some randomness for my curve so I will select this control vertex I will move a little bit in Y so like this and also I will give some randomness I will move this one on this side and select this one and move in X and also in Z I will select this one and move in X so your curve will not in stride so I will give some randomness like this so now I need to select this curve go to create panel nodes primitives and click on torus so it will automatically create in center of grid and move in x and also in y i will give radius to 0 0.2 so it's enough and also give height ratio to 0 0.3 or 0 0.35 okay so now you need to make one duplicate press ctrl D and move in Z rotate Z into 90 so select this both object in outliner and press ctrl G to group 
so in the group selected go to modify and choose center pivot and rename this group as test underscore chain 01 so this is a temporary group so after that we will make an original group so remember this part so this is our static part we make two or three times to achieve perfect uh, chain shape so now test chain group selected and control select the curve so select the group and control select the curve in outliner go to animation and choose constrain motion path and choose attach to motion path option box here I will choose start and end I will give 1 to 20th frame so that means it will start from 1 and end up with 20 copies over here so and also I will choose follow so in my case my front axis in Z so it's in Z direction always up axis in Y so I will choose Y and click attach so when you click on this one so our object will be travel to this curve up to 20 frames so see here I will move my time slider so you able to see over here so when the group object selected go to key sorry visualize and choose create animation snapshot option box here you need to choose start and end and start time to 1 and end up with its up to 20 frames so I will do 20 and choose snapshot so see here here I, we have some problems so in front side we have very close duplicates but in center it has even duplicate and in back side we have very close duplicates it happened by ease in and ease out so when the group object selected go to window and choose animation editor and choose graph editor so select this group and press F to focus so see here it will happen like this so the curve is in E sin and E so so that means our object is have lot of duplicates over here and even duplicates over here and end up with lot of duplicates so that means I need to give linear so press ctrl E to select all and click on this linear so that means it will be in straight line so that means our duplicates in even distance so see here but see here it has lot of duplicates is it mesh up with each and every mesh so that means I have number of duplicates has 20 so it's high so I will reduce my duplicates so I will undo this one so until you reach our static part so this is our static part so now I will select my chain group and control select my curve now I need to go my constraint motion path and attach to motion path option box here I will reduce my duplicates up to 15 so start time to 1 and end time to 15 and choose follow z axis in front and up axis to y and click attach so now the chain test to chain selected go to key sorry visualize and choose create animation snapshot option box here you need to choose end time to 15 because we animate up to 15 frames and click snapshot so now I need to use graph editor so open your graph editor and select this test chain group and press ctrl A to select all and click on linear so now we got 
even distance but I need to reduce much more so that means I will close my graph editor so I undo that again so until you got your static region so I will select this chain group and also go and go to constrain motion path and choose attach to motion path so I will now do 13 so use same settings and click attach so when the chain group selected go to visualize and choose create animation snapshot option box now I do up to 13 end up with 13 frames and click snapshot so now I need to open my outline sorry graph editor so go to window animation editor and graph editor so select this group and press ctrl A and choose linear so now I check over here so now it's perfect so you need to use two or three times to achieve a perfect shape of number of duplicates so now I will close my graph editor so see here it will be inside of our ground plane so select the curve and right click so select the curve and right click and choose control vertex and select this back side control vertex and move in why so that means our objects will be follow our curve so select over here and also move in Y so now it will be perfect now I will select my test chain group and press delete in keyboard and also select the curve and press delete in keyboard so here we have snapshot group so I will expand the snapshot group so I will select all the object in this group using control now you need to unparent this press shift P to unparent so that means it will leave that group I will select that one and press delete so now you have another duplicate over here so I will expand this group so select this all object using control now you need to press shift to P to unparent and select the snapshot group and press delete so now select this all object over here and press ctrl G to group and rename this group as chain 01 so now see here here we have some troubles so I will select this one and press delete so I will select this object and press go to modify and choose center pivot and move a little bit far away and press E and rotate like this and press W I will move like this so I will select this object and go to modify and center pivot so you need to give some manual tweak for this objects and press E and rotate like this and select this one go to modify and choose center pivot and press W move a little bit over here and press E a little bit rotate like this and select this object go to modify and choose center pivot move a little bit over here and move in Y so select this one go to modify and choose center pivot move a little bit over here so you need to adjust a little bit manually to got perfect shape so like this so now it's look like perfect so I will give some randomness to this object so I will select this object select all the object go to modify and choose center pivot and select this object and press E and rotate little bit in manual so so I will select this object 
I will rotate a little bit so I will give some randomness to this chain so like this okay so now we need to make that keychain ring so go to create panel polygon primitives and choose helix and press W I will move in X and also in Z so now I will reduce my thickness go to poly helix 1 inputs and choose radius to 0 0.8 sorry 0 0.3 much more 0 0.1 so it's enough I think so and also increase the subdivision axis to 30 so it's it's in rounded shape so now I will increase my reduce my height to 1 so to 0 0.8 so and also I will reduce my radius to 0 0.08 and reduce my height to 0 0.7 so I will use 0 0.5 so it's enough now I increase my width to 3 so like this so I will reduce my thickness much more so I will give radius to 0 0.05 now I reduce my height to 0 0.3 so now press W and move in Y so I have number of coils to 2 now I reduce my height to 0 0.2 so now I will reduce little bit of my radius to 0 0.04 so and also width to 2 so 2.5 so 2.5 is enough so I will move this one so I will reduce my height to 0 0.1 or 0 0.15 so now it's perfect now press W and move over here and press E and rotate in Y so press W and move a little bit in up so press E and rotate this object like this so press W I want to move my pivot over here press D in keyboard so I will move my pivot over here and also here now press E and rotate this object until it contacting our ground so like this okay so now it's contact our ground so now press W I will move my rotate my object over here So I will select this object and press E and rotate a little bit like this. So that's it. So now I rename this object as chain underscore ring zero one. So okay.
now we finished our model so next we need to apply some material and we start unwrapping okay so now I want to unwrap this heart shape and I want to texture this one in Photoshop so I will select this object and click on isolate select and go to top view so in the object selected and go to UV and choose planner option box so I will reset my settings here you need to choose in camera keep image with and height ratio and click project so right click and choose object mode select this object go to perspective so double click on the edge on mid side go to UV and choose UV editor here you need to turn on this one so toggle shaded UV display so to on so and then here you need to expand this one and choose separate the UV along the selected edge so when the edge selected you need to click on this one so that means our UV will be split up on center so you need to see clearly you need to enable this one toggle the display of texture border of active mesh so that means it will show our C image in perspective so right click and choose UV so select any one of the UV over on top side now click on this one now control right click and choose to shell and press W and move on this side now shift right click and choose unfold so sometimes it will unfold like this so I will undo this one shift right click and choose unfold option box here we have two option unfold 3d and legacy so I need to choose legacy and click apply and close so now it unfold perfect so do same thing on this one so right click and choose UV so select any one of this UV right click and choose to shell shift right click and choose unfold option box here you need to choose legacy and choose apply and close so press R and scale big and press E and scale rotate like this so you need to make sure keep this as a straight as possible so now you need to scale a little bit big so now you need to select this both object and scale a little bit down so select this one and press W move over here and select this one in UV mode you need to select this one and move this over here so this is our top face so top side so this is our bottom side and press W move over here so select this both object and press object R and scale a little bit big you need to keep this UV inside of this white area so because it will take snapshot only this white region don't keep any other than this so you need to keep our UV inside of this white region so right click and choose UV select this UV and go to polygons and choose UV snapshot so and then you need to click on this browse button so I will go my in my destination folder in images as a UV underscore so this is an hot shape so I will do hot underscore shape so like this and click save here you need to give I will give 1024 resolution and Y2 1024 and click on keep aspect ratio on and color value to red so I definitely want to choose my image format as PNG because I need to make sure my background as transparent so I will give PNG and my wireframe color to red and click OK so that means it will save in our destination folder so now you need to open your photoshop go to file and choose open so go to your destination folder so 
I will do my key cage keychain in images. So you need to find our UV. So select this one and click open. So when the layer zero selected and click lock button. So that means you cannot able to move this layer. So and then create new layer. So click the layer one and drag the layer behind our layer zero. So when the layer one selected, go to and choose paint bucket and choose white color and fill on this one so when the layer one selected and click lock button so now create new layer above this layer one so when the layer one selected and click create new layer so now when the layer two selected take polygonal lasso tool and choose new selection and feather to zero pixels here you need to draw and rough shape of our so don't be exact so I will draw and drop shape so and also I need to add this one so that means when the polygonal lasso to selected so you need to choose add to selection option so that means you also able to add this shape So you need to end up with here. So in the layer to selected here, you need to fill and dark red and take paint bucket tool and fill over here and press control D to deselect. So now see here when I zoom in, so you will able to see our wireframe. So now I will hide my layer to for temporary purpose to see our wireframe clearly so because the both object in red color so I cannot able to see my wireframe so I will hide this one and create select when the layer 2 selected and create new layer so when the layer 3 selected and go to and choose custom shape tool here you need to choose as a shape and choose and blue color choose sky blue over here so or choose over here you need to choose some sky blue color so for custom shape tool here you need to find click on this one and click the settings here you need to choose all and click ok here you need to find our 14 shape so over here so here we have two things so I will select second one double click on this one and draw this shape exactly in center so and take path selection tool and move this object exactly in center over here so and press ctrl T and scale little bit white so like this and press enter so now take text tool, horizontal type tool and click over here and choose same blue color. So select this one and click on here. So that means it will choose same color and click OK. Here you need to click on here and choose as a, in this case I will choose PS. So you type whatever you want. So I will take more tool. So and move over here and use keyboard arrow to adjust this one so like this if you want to increase or decrease the text so double click on this T thumbnail so and here you option to click and drag means it will increase or decrease our text you also able to change your style whatever you want so like this and move like this using keyboard arrow so now I hide my layer 0 to hide my wireframe and enable my layer 2 so to see my red color so now you need to save the file go to file and choose save as first of all you need to save as photoshop file 
because if you want to change something in future you need a photoshop file so i will save as hard shape in my images folder as photoshop file so now we need to save the targa file for our maya purpose go to file and choose save as and as targa go to your source images as any name as a targa in your source images and save and click 24 bits and click ok so now open your maya ok i will close my uv editor so right click and choose object mode so i will select this object and isolate this object right click and choose assign new material and choose arnold ai standard so i will rename this object as achi hot underscore shape underscore ai standard one and press enter so in diffuse you need to click on this checker and go to file and choose filter type to off and click on this one and choose it automatically goes your source images you need to select this hot shape dot tga so and click open so now press 6 in keyboard to see our texture mode so like this now i re isolate my object so now it's perfectly textured our hot in shape so now we need to apply some steel material for this cage so expand this object main group and control select all the cage and expand this chain group and here you need to select this chain group control select this chain group and also chain ring so you need to select all the chain and cage in outliner right click and choose assign new material and Arnold you need to choose AI standard so I need to rename this as steel underscore AI standard 2 so I didn't want any diffuse color for my steel so I will give weight to 0 and color to 0 so I need specular color so that means I need to give weight to 1 and give roughness to 0 0.2 little bit and choose fresnel and give fresnel amount to 0 0.9 so like this so now i open my arnold render view so i will close my outliner so i will open my arnold render view i will zoom out a little bit so now I need to set my camera view for my render so click spacebar in keyboard so that means it will switch over to 4 views I will minimize my Arnold render view so here I need to set my camera view so I will click and drag so that means you got only 2 viewports here go to rendering and click on create cam so when the camera is selected and press R and scale big go to panels perspective and choose camera one here you need to adjust our camera so press 16 keyboard to see our texture and then here you need to go to view camera settings and choose over scan view camera settings and choose resolution gate so you need to fix our camera like this okay so now click on this lock camera so that means you cannot able to move this view so i will hide my camera in my perspective view go to show and choose camera soft so open your arnold render view so in default arnold will be render your perspective so i need to render my camera so i will choose my camera shape one I will move on the side so now we need to apply sky dome light so go to Arnold go to light and choose sky dome light so that means the sky dome will be created like this 
so now in the sky dome selected and go to channel box sorry go to attributes in sky dome shape so here you need to apply HDR map for our reflection so I will provide link for you in the link below in this description box in my video so below this video in my YouTube description box so I will provide this link you will copy this one and then go over here in your browser and paste and download this one so after you download so I will already have this one HDRI map so I will provide this one you will download this and copy this one to in your destination folder in source images so you need to paste over here so it will come over here so I will close this one open your Maya so in the sky dome selected so go to sky dome shape and click on this color checker and go to file and filter type to off and click on this image name folder and choose HDRI map and click open so that means our HDRI map will be load so now you able to see our so I will zoom in little bit here you able to see our uh, reflection so it's look like a steel so I need to add some reflection for my hot in shape so I will zoom in little bit so I will select my hot in shape right click and choose material attributes here you need to find specular so I will give specular weight to 1 and also sorry and also roughness to 0 and I reduce my specular weight little bit little bit of specular weight to this object so to see our reflection of our hot in shape so I will give roughness a little bit so of 0 0.1 so like this I will give specular weight to 0 0.07 so it's enough okay it's render completed now I need to reduce noise in my scene see here here we have lot of noise press shift and left mouse button click and drag to render the specified region so now the noise will be happened by sky dome so select the sky dome light and here you need to increase the samples to 5 ok now our noise will be highly reduced over here now I need to give my sky dome resolution to 3000 pixels because my HDRI map in width is 3000 pixels so I will give resolution over here in 3000 pixels so now I need to take full render so I will uncheck this one and also I will change my render settings go to render settings and I want to change my common attributes as full HD so HD 1080 so I will close this one so when you change your resolution sometimes it will be bleach so you need to reduce the brightness over here so like this or you reduce using exposure so I will select this one sky dome light I will reduce my exposure a little bit so I will give exposure to minus 0 0.8 okay it's render completed it looks great I save my file go to file and choose save image color corrector and desktop 
I will save my name as page underscore keychain. So dot jpeg. So I will save this one. So now I preview my file. So I will go my desktop and right click and choose preview. I hope you like it. I see you on next project. Click subscribe button to subscribe our YouTube channel. We always need your support to create high quality content further. So please subscribe. Click here to also watch the tutorial of how to use AI volume scattering in Maya 2017 using Arnold Render Engine.